everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Stealth Bastard Deluxe. So this is kind of a special game for me to be taking a Let's Look at on the channel because it brings back good memories of spring or summer 2011. You know, laying on my bed in Korea recording one of my first Let's Look at's, which was a Let's Look at of a freeware game called Stealth Bastard. And now here we are in December 2012, almost time for the Mayan Apocalypse. And just in time, Stealth Bastard Deluxe has actually come out on Steam. So this is a reimagining of that game. And kind of a fleshing out of that game, as you can tell by the deluxe suffix at the end. Uh, and this is now available on Steam for 10 bucks. So the real question is going to be, is this worth paying 8 when it's on sale, or $10 when you could just get the uh, initial version for free? And I think the answer to that question is going to become a little bit, or the question itself is going to become a little bit more twisted and convoluted as we get along. But I'm having a lot of fun with Stealth Bastard so far. I don't want to spoil anything re with regards to my impressions so far, so let's just get started. So the first thing we're going to do is not show off any of the new stuff, really, or any of the explicit, like, new features or anything like that. Instead, we're just going to show off some of the uh, gameplay that we've done so far. So you know what, why not start on Sector 1? This is a action-slash-puzzle platformer, so in traditional Northern Lion action-slash-puzzle platformer stuff, or uh, video methodology, shall we say, uh, I'm going to play through levels that I've already done so that I don't get stuck for a hundred years and find myself in a difficult position. So one of the new additions uh, to Stealth Bastard is, if I remember correctly, the addition of a story. I don't believe there was a story uh, in the last one. So there's kind of like, I wouldn't necessarily call it uh, like a def definitive narrative or anything like that, but we do occasionally get scenes like this. Uh, where we do get a little bit of background or a little bit of like context on what's going on here. So we can see that we are not the only Stealth Bastard. And you know, like a game that shall not be named, we do start as kind of like a uh, scientific experiment here. I was just wondering if I could maybe... Oh, I wanted to get back up there to see if maybe there was an Easter egg up there. Uh, but anyway, these are just the first levels where we are going to learn what to do. But anyway, as I was going to say, like in Portal, uh, we are basically a test subject who is trying to do uh, good deeds to basically ensure our... I don't know, the happiness of our tester, basically. So we can jump around. Uh, we can also hack terminals, as you can see, and hacking those terminals is essential in order to open up the exit doors. So this is a, a 2D side-scrolling puzzle platformer. There are leaderboards at the end of every mission, and as you can see, you know, this game is uh, pretty popular, I would say. It came out on Steam only a few days ago, and it already has well over a thousand uh, people on these early leaderboards, so I, I imagine it's selling quite well. Obviously, I've already completed all of these levels, but I'm trying to get, you know, A's on them to rank up a little bit more. We do have other suits, by the way, so you can see this is our normal suit, the basic clone unit. Uh, PTI is cheap, expendable workforce, no particular aptitudes or abilities, just goggles and a slight paunch. If we go to the camo suit, the latest in light bending fabric makes your clone invisible for a limited period. Just don't get caught in the open when it runs out of charge, hold C to charge up and use. So I've never used this one before, but the way you unlock this is actually by beating uh, level 1, or sorry, world 1, sector 1 if you want to put it that way, with the uh, no equipment suit. And how do you get these other ones? Once unlocked in sector three, once unlocked in three sector 001 tests, the decoy will be available for all tests in the sector. Interesting. Complete this test twice to unlock the holographic decoy. So that's what we unlocked last time. Okay, I got it. Anyway, let's just start with no equipment for now, so I can continue to show off what's going on in Stealth Bastard here. Uh, so we can jump. We can also execute kind of a wall jump here. This is going to be bad timing, I think. This is very much a, a time attack or score attack type game. I guess technically uh, time attack because there is no real score. Uh, but it's not just action related. It's a nice mix of, of both actioning and puzzling, as you will be able to see. So this is obvious. Oh, that was not good. Uh, this is obviously a. M oh, that was even worse, actually. Uh, a mix of both uh, actioning and puzzling. But this one is primarily timing based, so we're just going to fall through here. That was absolutely awful. We're still not done with this level yet. Now, this is a good time for me to point out that, you know, the name of the game is Stealth Bastard. Uh, there is a heavy stealth element in the game, so if you take a look at my goggles, hopefully you can see those clearly. Uh, when those are green Sam Fisher style, it represents uh, us being not visible to cameras or to enemies that we might come across at that specific time as well. When they're yellow, we are visible, uh, partially, and when they're red, we're fully visible. But, that doesn't necessarily mean we've been caught, like Mark of the Ninja style. All it means is that uh, we could be caught if someone was to look in our general direction. And there are security systems that we'll come across later uh, that will help us out in determining how we are doing on a level. Anyway, that was awful. We got a B. I could restart that, but, but why bother? Let's just instead move on to the next level. Uh, actually, let's move a little bit further along in the game. Let's go to Laser Burns. And why don't we try out the camo suit? I've never actually used this one before. These are new additions to the game, I believe. Or at the very least, I played so poorly at the other one uh, that I was incapable 
of actually unlocking those. So I just used the camo very quickly there. As you can see, we charge it up, then we can turn invisible for a brief period. Uh, but what I'm going to do is come up here, and this level, I believe, is a little bit more puzzly. Here's what's, what happens here. If we just try to, like, run across this camera, as you can see, we get flayed by those lasers. Usually cameras either have a laser attached to them, or uh, they kind of feed into security systems that will uh, trigger and kill us. So instead, what we're going to do is come through here, and we should be able to hit this switch, which will give us... Oh, let's try that again. Which will give us this crate here. There's a lot of crate pushing in this game. And what we will do is put the crate all the way back over here. Uh, I think this is what I want to do anyway. Some, this game is surprisingly difficult. It might just be difficult for me, but uh, I remember when I did the Let's Look at, you know, oh man, last year, I suffered from similar problems. By the way, you might be seeing some weird little, uh, like, screen flicker issues. Oh, I killed myself with the crate. That was incredibly stupid. I don't know what's up with that, but uh, that's been an issue that I've been suffering with since day one here. I know a lot of people have had really tough times recording this game with Frap, so I'm actually using Camtasia Studio, which oftentimes results in a picture quality that is a little bit fuzzy, or audio quality that's a little bit fuzzy, but uh, by and large, it's, it's still acceptable, I think. So what we're going to do is just try to do this without hitting that. There we go. Uh, what I was trying to basically get at when I said that was, um, this game probably looks and sounds better than it does right now. I'm just trying to remember, do I really want to hack this again? Yes, I do. Okay, so this opens up the final... Or the next section, I should say, which will allow me to get out and over this switch, hopefully. Alright, so we're just going to book it through here, watch out for the camera. But yes, this game is, is fairly difficult. I've only beaten the first two sectors. Oh, that was almost rough there. I've only beaten the first two sectors, that represents like an hour of play, but keep in mind uh, that I've played through this game before as well, at least a lot of it. That being said, it was a long time ago, I think I played it, it was like May 2011. You can go back in like the first Let's Look At playlist and, and see uh, what what up with that, but I remember that video was one of the first ones where like I really got frustrated with the YouTube community because I fucked up this puzzle like 10 times in a row and people were like, oh my god, Northern Line, you must be an idiot when it comes to puzzles. And I guess that's how that trope started to exist. So I'm just trying to think about how I want to do this. I guess like that is going to be good enough. You can see other stealth bastards there in the background trying and hopefully failing in their attempts to do the tests here. Again, a little bit of a weird screen flicker, but this will mark the end of this level. So as you can see, uh, these early levels, I actually did not use the camo suit like at all there. Uh, but these early levels are not all that difficult, but again, whoa. Uh, oh, that's just for this equipment. I was going to say, I don't think I deserve to be ranked uh, 43rd in the world, but that's only because I'm using the camo suit here. So there are separate leaderboards, that's cool. Uh, let's try this level, and we'll try the decoy suit. So, equip your clone with a holographic decoy projector to trick robots or cameras. Press X to pick up or drop the projector, hold X to throw it. Okay. So this game does not use WASD. It actually uses the arrow keys as well as Z to jump. Oh, I don't know if I want my guy to be in this position. I guess we can do a little wall jumping up here. And then we'll try to do this. We'll show off, uh, I think a boss level would be a good thing to show off. I really should have taken my decoy with me. Uh, but yeah, we'll show off a boss level, and in addition to that, um, we will show off uh, some harder levels as we get going here. So what I'm going to do here is just t hit the switch with perfect timing, uh, which should allow me... I mean, I will need to get through here. Is this the way we do it, though? I can't remember. I thought maybe I just jumped like that to start with. Oh yeah, watch out for the camera. Mistakes do indeed happen. Uh, so we're just going to take the long way here. Then when the shadows come, we can run across. So there's definitely, that's probably the main mechanic that you're going to exercise in this game, is using uh, shadows consistently to uh, help you basically get through cameras undetected. So we're going to hit this switch here, when the shadows were in the right place. And then we're going to push this downwards, which should allow us to hit this switch down here. There's a lot of like, hit a switch to get a crate, use that crate to get other switches uh, involved in the game. And most puzzles, or most levels, are, are multi-stage puzzles. Uh, oh, that was not good. Let's try this again. we got to time it so that the crate is actually pushed onto the switch when that hacking terminal is not illuminated. So when the shadow covers it up. Like so. That's going to be perfect. Okay. Let's come down here and hack this. Oh, yeah. M levels are usually multi-stage puzzles. Which means that it's good because you can kind of solve them piecemeal, but also, levels tend to be fairly long. Like, your first time through, it might take you anywhere from, you know, 45 seconds to 5 minutes to beat a level. But on your second time through, you can kind of time attack it a little bit, make things easier on yourself. So that time, we just kind of snuck around there, 
attack the terminal, and then we will sneak in. It does seem that there's kind of like a secret that opened up in the bottom right there, but I don't really understand how to get it, so never mind that for now. Anyway, there you go. We are 36th in the world, even though I didn't use the target at all, or use the special ingredient at all. Special ingredient? Special suit at all. Anyway, uh, having completed that level, you can see there's a number of different kinds of suits here that I haven't really done a great job of showing off so far, but let's just take a look at the other ones. Uh, once unlocked in three sector 001 test, the teleporters will be available for all tests in this sector. I'm gonna guess that that is like a suit that you can throw and then teleport to that suit. And the anti-light, I have no idea what that means. It probably uh, deflects light is my guess. Create an audible distraction by pressing C, press X to pick up or drop the device anyway. We've used this so far. Uh, let's exit out here and we'll go to our final level. Meet the boss. So this is a new addition as well. As far as I remember, I'm gonna go with the decoy here because I didn't really get a chance to use it last time. Uh, as far as I remember, these creatures did not exist in the first Stealth Bastard. How do I throw it is the real question. I mean, I can easily place it. I'm gonna get shot here potentially. Oh no, he's shooting at the wrong one. This is a terrible idea! Can I get close enough to steal it without getting destroyed? He sees me. I'm fucked. Yep. Um, I, I don't think there were bosses in the original game. I'm gonna get seen here again too. The Sentinels basically, you can see they have a huge range on their vision. Uh, and what we have to do is avoid that range and still solve the level. So every final level of a sector has Sentinels in it. That was a bad idea. Uh, the way that I did this the first time was basically just turn this on as soon as possible and then jump the fuck down that. I wonder if I could just, like I wanna throw this? Nah, that's not gonna work. I need to like throw it downwards is the problem. Oh, hold X to throw maybe. Nope. <laughs> Does not work. And I'm definitely gonna die here. I did manage to get a throw going there. I think it might require the D-pad. Yeah, it does require the D-pad. Cool, so there's our decoy. And then we can get down here. And by puzzling here, we should be able to get through. So overall, here's the, the interesting thing about Stealth Bastard. My overall impressions of the game are very positive, as they were over a year ago when I took a look at it for the first time. I think this is a great mix of kind of like cerebral puzzling. Not that the puzzles are that, you know, mentally difficult most of the time, uh, but they do require some strategy and, you know, you know, proper thinking basically within the rules of the game to figure out. Uh, and also a nice mix of like action platforming as well. Like, there's some fairly difficult stuff uh, that you have to do from not just a conception or, you know, coming up with the idea of how you solve it in this game, uh, but also just executing it can be difficult as well, which is, is something that I, I enjoy in a game like this. However, oh, that was awful. Here's the rub. Uh, the game's available currently, at least as of the time of this recording, I believe it's available for free. Uh, if you were to just Google Stealth Bastard, uh, you could find it. Is the deluxe version worth paying $10 for? Is there enough new content available? To be 100% totally honest, I can't necessarily say with authority if there's enough content to warrant $10 or $8 extra value. Uh, I mean, that's something that varies from person to person, obviously. Just one second, I just need to focus here. So I need to step on the switch, step off the switch, I should say, at exactly the right time to get through here. And then I will continue with my thoughts on the overall, you know, value proposition for this game. That was perfect, there we go. Okay, so we're gonna try to, we've gotta hit this switch as well, or hack this terminal. And the way that we're gonna do this is by just putting a shadow right there. And then we're gonna jump in there when we have an opportunity to do so. Uh, which means we're gonna have to wait for the sentinel to get a little further away. If I had taken the decoy with me, I might have been able to make that work. Uh, but right now I'm just gonna stand just outside of his range. And as he swings around here, should be able to, uh, I don't think he can see me here. So I should just be able to drop down through the exit. Especially if I take the shadows down. Oh, uh, okay, just stay hidden for a second. We're almost done here. Beautiful. Okay, so we did finish the test there. Was that better or worse than my first time? I think it might have been worse, actually. Uh, but it does put us 116th in the world, just ahead of Notorious HIV, which is both an awful and amazing name. Anyway, we're going to continue onwards here. And as you can see, phase one has been complete. We don't really get a cutscene, but we do get a nice little frame of art there anyway. More like frame of fart, right? I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, so let's just back out for a second here. Uh, talk about the value proposition. We will play more levels, don't worry about that. Uh, but yeah, the, so it's eight to ten dollars depending on whether you get it in the first week or on sale or uh, pay the full price that it's gonna eventually be uh, available for on Steam. Uh, is it worth that? I mean, you get community levels and there is a level editor, so there is like, as always, the potential 
for a lot of really good community involvement with this game. But as always, I have to add the caveat, of course, that this depends on the like aptitude and will of the community in the game. So if you have a community like the community in Trials Evolution, this can add a lot of variety and a lot of replayability to your playthrough. Whereas if you have a community like, say, I don't know, maybe Dynamite Jack is the best example I can think of, where it's maybe not that active, and I'm not trying to be offensive to anyone who likes Dynamite Jack, that's a decent game, uh, but the community is not really all that active as far as I know, so the uh, kind of level creation is not that strong. Anyway, all I'm trying to say is, I, I mean, I think Stealth Bastard has a really good community, it has a lot of people who have supported the game for sure uh, since it has come out. However, you know, there's always that risk that maybe the community doesn't end up supporting the level editor. But it does exist, it's better than it not existing, don't get me wrong. Uh, but apart from that, you're basically just playing Stealth Bastard. I can't remember how many levels the original had, uh, but you do get the addition of the suits as well. Now, if this game had not been available for free, this is kind of a no-brainer, because this is a very, very good game uh, that is absolutely 100% worth $10. So, the question for me is, is this a case where uh, this game is worth $10, or is it a case where the the original game shouldn't have been free in the first place, <laughs> if that makes any sense? Like, I mentioned this on Twitter, but a lot of people say, by the way, that, that robot will kill us if it detects us. Um, but I mentioned that the problem with a, a free game that becomes premium is that people inevitably ask, you know, is the uh, the new version worth? I'm totally like screwed here. Uh, is the new version worth paying money, whereas the free version still exists? Uh, whereas with Stealth Bastard, I kind of feel like the case is, you know, should Stealth Bastard have been free in the first place? I'm not looking a gift horse in the mouth by any circumstance here. Uh, oh, come on, don't get me, robot. Uh, I'm glad that Stealth Bastard was free. It was probably the best freeware game I played last year, unless you were like a huge fan of GURP. Uh, but, if they had charged $10 for the original Stealth Bastard, I still think it would have been worth it then. So, I think it's a situation where I don't necessarily know that the value is there to get this over the free version. However, the free version itself is worth $10. Oh, that was not good. So take that, <laughs> take that as you will. Uh, I'm happy with the purchase that I've made here, and I think others will be happy if they make the same purchase. However, uh, I don't know if there's necessarily quite enough here on like a consumer level to, to warrant that purchase. That's something that's going to have to be decided by each individual buyer, I guess. It's more of a case where I bought the game because I wanted to support the developers, and I believe that the original could have easily uh, fetched the same amount of money that this one is going for, then I specifically felt like, oh, this is the version of Stealth Bastard. So we're just going to stand down here. This should allow us to hack the terminal. Things get a little bit more tricky as you move along. Uh, the first sector probably took me like 15 minutes, 20 minutes to beat, and the second sector took me quite nearly an hour. So things get much more difficult as you move through the game. But of course, oh, I've done these levels before. Made it through there. Uh, so it's a little bit easier for us on our second pass through for sure. The reason I don't want to open up the uh, community levels is because I worry that it might actually uh, put me into the Steam browser, which oftentimes causes weird errors with recording. But anyway. Uh, let's do one more level here, maybe in Sector 2, and then maybe we'll check out some Sector 3 levels that I haven't touched, despite the fact that I feel like it's going to be a terrible decision because I always fuck up in puzzle platformers. So I am using the camo test, or sorry, the camo uh, mission, or suit this time. Why do I struggle figuring out how to say suit? Uh, and this is one of the more difficult missions that I've done. I just completed this one recently before we started recording, so I'm going to see if I remember it here. Uh, I know that we have to hack these terminals, but obviously I can't get by that robot in that situation. So what I might do... Oh, okay, just hide a little bit. Again, this is a stealth game, but it's not as stealthy, uh, obviously, as something like Hitman or... Uh, even Dishonored or Mark of the Ninja to use... Oh, that was off, almost awful. Uh, or Mark of the Ninja to use like a more recent and relevant, probably because it's 2D, uh, comparison. Anyway, one second, I need to go camo here. Oh, you can't go camo and move at the same time, or I should have just continued holding C. I guess that was what happened there. Let's try this again. So I need to get by this. Oh, I was hoping he would go the other way. Just gonna drop down here and sneak by him, then hit this switch. Again, this is all switch puzzles, but it's not the bad kind of switch puzzles. It's not switch puzzles like... Oh, that was so bad. You've gotta be patient in this game as well, which, as you might expect, can sometimes present kind of a problem for me. Can we make this? Yes, we can, just barely. Oh, that was not good, but we're still gonna make it. Uh, yeah, Stealth Bastard is very much a game that requires conscious thought from a player like me to play, because I'm used to rushing through things, as you would know if you played, or if you watched me play Spelunky 
or even Mark of the Ninja at times. So I think what we have to do with this guy is we gotta like hit this switch. No, what we gotta do is we gotta sneak him in and like slowly via the switches move this robot further and further into this level. I think I remember this one right now. So we gotta like trap him in that little area right there, which I think we do. Um, oh, ah, that was awful. Let me think about this for a second. What does this one do? Oh, we've already, this one's unhittable again, that's fine. But the other one is not. So we're gonna wanna get past this dude. We're just gonna let him go. Oh, you can't see me. He can see me. I should really be using my camo suit more than I am. Okay. So we've dropped all the way. Here we go. Now we can just hit C. Why not use our camo suit effectively this time? Just jump over him like so. And I don't think our meter there uh, ever gets better, so. We hit this switch. This allows him to get in here. Ah, now I remember. So now we trap him in here. Done. Uh, and then we come down here. I think we hit this switch and he can move on. No. Then I go up here and hit this switch. And then he can move on. Like so. Then I trap him in there. And then there's another switch I can hit to allow him to hit a deeper switch further into the level. Let's see if that works. Beautiful. And then. Oh, come on! I had it perfectly set up. The checkpoint system can be a little unforgiving as you can see, uh, but this is also just an example of me playing pretty badly, so don't sweat that too much. I'm digging this camo suit, though. Uh, I'm glad that they don't just unlock for you at, you know, some random point in the game. Like, Mark of the Ninja kind of suffered from that to a certain extent, although I love Mark of the Ninja and consider it to be uh, a superior game to this, not to be, like, offensive or necessarily take sides, but if you can only buy one, I would rather you got Mark of the Ninja. Uh, how do we let this guy through here again? I think it's... Oh, this, and then we hit the switch in the middle, right? Um, but Mark of the Ninja starts out fairly difficult, especially if you're new to the game, and then gets a little bit easier, at least that's how I feel about it, uh, due to the... Should we do this now? Uh, due to the ability to get suit upgrades that make takedowns way easier. I think Stealth Bastard does progression in a much better and much more correct way, where basically... Okay, we're good. I still need to hack that terminal, though, which I could probably just do by making myself completely invisible. Nope, that's not true. Let's get out of there. How am I going to get this? I, I can now try to move this guy out, or I can just try to hack the terminal all at once. It's going to be slow going. Hey, we made it. Okay. So let's get out. Uh, yeah, progression in this is better, because you actually have to beat the levels with, like, the pure form of your suit, which is with no extra abilities. Only three people in the world have done that. That's crazy. And I am by far the worst. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so you have to beat get the levels in the pure way before you get to try it in different ways, which I think is a better way to do it. Anyway, we're gonna check out Security clear or security Crackdown here. We're gonna do at least one level uh, of each one, or of this world right here. Apparently only one person has done this. Oh, that's based on equipment, okay. Uh, so we're gonna go with the, the normal suit here. And I don't know, this could take me two minutes to figure out, it could take me five minutes, anything could happen. So sensors respond to touch. Is this a sensor? This is a sensor right here, okay. I understand now. So obviously, we're going to want to get up here, hit this sensor, robot's going to come for us, then can I make him fall down? That's what I want to do. Yeah, that worked. Oh, but then he hit us with his laser. So we're going to use this robot basically as our own personal fuck toy uh, to hit all of these switches, or all of these sensors for us. So he's going to turn around here, and then we're going to let him drop down. He's going to hit that sensor for us, which is going to allow us to get in here, I think. This is an interesting predicament that we've got on our hands here. Because how am I going to get through there? This part is easy enough. And I can easily fall down. Not that that would prove anything. Do I just actually have to jump over him, like, in the moment? Yes, I do, and I made it through. Okay, that was more difficult than I expected. Uh, but let's continue moving onwards here. Again, keep in mind, there's a good mix of... Oh... There is a good mix of, uh, like, brain-type puzzles and a good mix of hands-type puzzles, where you have to be a little bit more... Ooh, that's not good. Uh, where you have to be a little bit more, uh, you know, quick-witted versus proper, properly planning. Okay, so we're gonna hack this terminal. Now, here's the thing. What's my issue here? I... Come on! Yes! Okay! Oh, I can't quite make it! Alright, well, we might as well die then. Alright, so it's gonna push us into that little gap. Here we go, let's try again. I don't know, I don't understand the thick ahead part. I think that means I basically should just not touch the that first option until I absolutely have to. Does 
that work? Oh, we're so close. Okay, we might as well kill ourselves here. So I think all I've got to do is make sure that I do not touch that first one for any longer than is necessary. So that was pretty good. I think we might be able to make it on this one. Let's try that. So just do it like so. And we should be able to get through there easily. How about this? Oh! Okay. Um, managed to survive that somehow. And get through. Okay, obviously our performance is graded. I think we're okay if we just drop into the sensor. Yeah, that'll turn off the laser. What is this thing, though? I have no idea what that is. We should be able to hack this terminal. Maybe that'll turn off the laser and we can get it? No. Uh, but we do need to turn off the laser somehow. The orb oh, you can't just crouch. If you crouch, the laser will shoot you. Okay, I didn't get that until the last second there. So let's try this again. We can see the... Oh, that was awful again. Uh, we can see the exit, at least. Getting to it is always... God damn it. At least I'm not doing as bad as I did in my last Stealth Bastard video. Mind you, that would be borderline impossible to do worse, but... You can check that out if you want to know what I'm talking about. So we're gonna... This sensor is gonna turn on the laser, though, isn't it? That worries me a little bit. What, what, what does that sensor do? It just opens that door. Okay, that's fine. So we could trap that robot down here. Yeah, and the robot will get the la- OH MY GOD, I JUST DEACTIVATED THE SENSOR at the worst possible time. There's a lot of trial and error involved in this game as well. But overall, it is quite fun. I hope I- when I articulated my thoughts on the game's pricing model earlier, that made sense to some people. I think this game is worth $10, but not everyone might feel that same compulsion to help the developers when the game is available for free. That's basically what I'm trying to get at there. Okay. Now, what do I do not want to do? I'm okay. As soon as I duck, though, the lasers are going to go off. So I think I want to go, like, up and over, like that. Okay. Beautiful. Worked totally fine. We got to the end of the exit. That is going to do it. What is my rank on that level? Like, 500th? Ah, 384th. It could be worse. As always, thank you guys for watching. This has been Stealth Bastard Deluxe, now available on Steam for 8 to $10. I'm not... Don't quote me on whether or not the freeware version is still available, but... Uh, my guess is that it still is, so feel free if there's no demo for the game to go check that out instead, uh, and maybe you will find that it is not worth 8 to $10 to you, but for me, uh, this is definitely a, a very good, very solid indie game that warrants $10, and the fact that they released it for free earlier only makes me want to support them more, if that makes any sense. It's a very unusual way for me to be speaking of things, because, you know, it's not often we run across a situation like this, but th I hope I summarize my feelings on it uh, succinctly and you guys understand what I'm talking about. But in any case, thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.